Hey guys, this is Alan with Sonic Electronics and today we're going to be talking about the big three. Okay guys, just like I stated, we're going to be talking about the big three. Behind me I have a 2001 Toyota Celica, which we're actually going to be doing a big three together and going over uh, what you need to do to accomplish that. Uh, we're also going to be sharing and showing you some other engine bays because every engine bay is going to be completely different. So really when it boils down to it, there's three connections that need to be upgraded. So that's really going to be your charging wire from your alternator to your battery positive. And then you're going to upgrade your battery's ground from the battery to the chassis. And then you're also going to need to upgrade your engine ground, which is typically going to be coming off the engine block to the chassis. Okay guys, so as you can see, you're going to need a few tools for the job. Every car is going to be different. You're going to probably need some wrenches, some sockets, some ratchets. Uh, you're definitely going to want some zip ties. Of course, you're going to need your big three upgrade uh, kit. Um, you might be able to have, do this with some extra wire that's laying around that you may have left over. Or most people typically wind up buying a kit. And a kit is going to consist of power wire, ground wire, a bunch of different connectors. I do want to point out that the connectors that they come with aren't going to always be terminated. So using a regular set of crimpers to crimp a set of four gauge or zero gauge connectors onto a piece of wires, not really the correct tool. I recommend something like this here that actually supports the appropriate gauges. Now, if you're a DIY guy at home, of course, we're gonna obviously recommend trying to get it crimped as good as you possibly can with whatever you have. Some of you may have a vise uh, where you can really crimp that on there really tight, but then I would definitely suggest a uh, butane torch with some solder to really solder those connections so they're really solid so you know you've got a good connection. If you crimp your connector on the, your wire and you can wiggle it, that's definitely not a good sign. Okay, so like we stated at the beginning, every engine bay is going to be completely different. Like this particular car as an example, had a nice little cover that kind of covered up everything, but that didn't allow you to see some of the connections that we needed to look at. So this particular car, the alternator is pretty much right up top, so it makes this really easy. You can see here's the factory charging wire, and it's really, little, it's really a little difficult to see here, but if we pop this guy off right here, we can see that this is indeed our factory ground from the engine block to the chassis. Now, I have no idea why somebody basically would run a ground about the size of a speaker wire, but that's something we're obviously gonna wanna take a look at and upgrade. Now, certain vehicles, you may have a hard time finding the original OEM ground wire, uh, or the alternator may not be as easily accessible as it is in this particular car. So before you start, take a look at where all these connections might be, because this is really gonna help you out in knowing what you need to access, what tools you need, and the length of the cable and the run, and how you're gonna route that cable to go uh, from the alternator to the battery, upgrading those grounds, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this car, but we'll, first, before you get started, Make sure you go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal off the battery so that way you don't short out anything or damage anything. We can kind of see right here the alternator power wire. The charging wire goes straight right over there down over to the battery or to the fuse box. So what we're actually going to do is go ahead and take our new wire and we're gonna connect it right onto that same post and we're gonna take that exact same path right over to the battery. Now I don't recommend uh, taking away the factory charging wire, leave it intact. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that or dissecting the, the stock harness. I would go ahead and just add your uh, upgraded uh, charging wire here. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start that and get it routed right over to the battery terminal. So as you can see, we intentionally mounted the new power wire behind it uh, in such a fashion where we could actually utilize the original cover that covered the terminal off the alternator. Now, of course, depending on the size of cable that you're doing or the design of it or the angle, you may not be able to achieve the same exact results by being able to utilize that part again. So normally we would wrap the cable in either Tessa tape or split loom. Uh, that way it actually, went, while it's routed, you won't really notice uh, that anything's changed or been added. It looks like it's factory. However, for this particular video, for the visual presentation, I'd like for you guys to be able to see exactly how the cable's routed.
Okay guys, as you can see, we successfully routed our new four gauge charging wire from the alternator all the way over to the battery. Now, if you wanted to take a step further, some guys will actually put an inline fuse holder. It may be a good idea. However, what you, as you can see, what we went ahead and did is we put a bunch of zip ties every so many inches to ensure that that wire is not gonna fall on anything hot and get shorted out. So remember we talked about three different points. We're gonna be moving on to our secondary point now here upgrading our chassis ground to battery. It's gonna be really key for you to make sure that you really choose a good ground. Like this particular OEM battery terminal, if you follow this down, the factory ground goes underneath the battery, it goes in a maze, and we'd have to really take apart a lot of the vehicle to get to that point. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're actually gonna go with a ring terminal right off the factory terminal here, and we're actually gonna create our own new ground with a nice nut and bolt. And of course, we're gonna to need to clean the surface off, make sure it's free from paint and any kind of corrosion or debris. So that way we have a nice solid ground. But it's really important where you actually choose to make a ground. Because of course, everything that is metal underneath this paint, uh, once it's bare, can be used as a ground, but you wouldn't wanna necessarily choose just any location. There's an example on the other side of the car where you can see there's a really thin, flimsy piece of metal. And it looks like you would you know, potentially want to ground here because there's already an existing hole. But if you look at it further, it's just held on by two little spot welds. You want it to be a major part of the frame itself. One thing you'll notice before we get started is we did have to modify the ring terminal just a wee little bit, just so it could actually fit in between here and bolt down nice and secure and snug. However, if you're using aftermarket battery terminals, in some cases, you're not gonna necessarily need to use a ring terminal on this side because you're gonna strip the wire back, insert it in here, and tighten it down by the Allen key. So it really depends on if you're upgrading the terminals or trying to utilize your factory OEM battery terminals. Okay guys, so we've already measured and we got our cable cut to length. So we're gonna go ahead and attach our new ground to our OEM battery terminal and route this over to the new grounding point. Uh, we obviously definitely don't want to ground anything to paint. So we're gonna take our wire wheel and uh, scrape the paint off, exposing the metal so we have a nice surface to ground to using our nut and bolt. I use stainless steel hardware, because your stainless steel hardware isn't gonna rust. And we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of clear coat because we want to seal off any exposed metal to where it could start to rust because obviously we know that corrosion and rust definitely are gonna lead to the ground to start deteriorating over time. All right guys, so that wraps up connection number two, and uh, that is the battery negative to chassis ground. All right guys, so we're moving on to step three, which is the ground that goes from the engine block to the chassis. Now, this is something that some people do a little different. We've gone ahead and found our uh, OEM ground here. As you can see, it's like the size of dental floss, basically, in, in comparison to like a four gauge wire or larger. Uh, but it goes from right here, all the way over, right on the opposite side, to the chassis. And it bolts right there with a small 10 millimeter bolt. Now, some people, when they upgrade this ground, they actually will go from here to the actual negative battery terminal on the opposite side, or from the engine block to the battery's chassis ground. So some people argue, I guess it really depends on what you wanna do. We're just gonna go ahead and upgrade ours from here to the other point that I showed you just a second ago, right over there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so we successfully have removed our OEM ground and as you can see, like I said earlier, it's really small. Here is the OEM ground in comparison to our new four gauge ground that we're gonna be replacing it with. Not only that, was it small, but on top of it, at both ends of the connection, they're both grimy and dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we get those nice and clean before we reinstall our new aftermarket ground. All right guys, so we went ahead and finished up our ground from our engine block to our chassis. 
Um, it's nice and solid and secure. Obviously a huge upgrade from our OEM ground uh, that you find right here. You may have seen that we used a few different tools, just kind of like we stated at the beginning. Sometimes you may need some extensions, uh, um, a, a wobble socket set. Um, it all really just depends. This particular one is a 2001 Celica that we just finished. Every single vehicle is different. You might find the alternator might be mounted at the bottom of the vehicle. It might be right at the top. It really just depends. So the tools that you may need for each individual vehicle is going to be completely different. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and take you around and show you some of the different uh, types of connections or where they might be found on different vehicles. Obviously this one's a 2001 Celica, but we're going to show you a few other cars. All right guys, so here's one of the examples I'm going to show you behind me is a 2013 Chevy Cruze. Let's go over the obvious real quick. Here you can see obviously the batteries right there. You can follow this right down there to see the factory negative terminal going to the factory ground for the battery. Um, it's kind of hard to really find and see exactly where the factory uh, engine block ground is, where it goes from the engine block to the chassis. But obviously you can see the obvious right there is the battery. Oh, well, look, here's one of the ones I was talking about. I don't know if you could see it. Way down there, really hard to see, is the factory alternator. So this would probably be one of those cars I talked about at the beginning where I said to upgrade or to access that charging wire to go from the alternator to the battery, you may have to put this thing up on jack stands or get it up on a lift to actually be able to access that. So you can see this car may be a little bit more difficult in certain areas than others. Okay guys, so behind me I got a 2013 Jeep Patriot. And uh, just go over real quick, we'll pop this guy right off. There's where the battery's at. There's the uh, battery ground. Way down below there where you can't see it is the engine ground. There's an additional little ground strap here. And this is gonna be one of those more difficult vehicles because way down there below there is the alternator where you'd probably even have a pretty tough time accessing it from the bottom. So this one would be one of those ones where I would say, have fun. And maybe you might want your mechanic to do it if you don't have the correct tools to do this yourself. This is not easy like the Toyota Celica that you saw us do earlier. All right guys, behind me, to sum it up, we have a 2002 Ford Ranger pickup. And uh, this one's actually pretty easy. Alternator's right on the top of the engine, as you can see right there. Obviously, here's our battery. We can see our factory ground location there. It also uh, already has a engine ground going right down there, which is really kind of difficult to see, as well as a engine ground strap right here. But there's plenty of locations where you can either replace or upgrade the ground, and it's really easy to run a new charging wire from the alternator to the battery. The foundation of all vehicles are still gonna always be the same. It doesn't matter if it's a Chevy Cruze, a Toyota Celica, um, a Jeep Patriot, or this Ford Ranger. You still need to upgrade your battery ground, your engine ground, and your charging wire going from your alternator to your battery. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the video on the install on the 2001 Celica. For more information and for awesome videos like this, make sure you subscribe and sign up. I'm Alan with Sonic Electronics and I'll see you next time.